This is the IST Health Tip of the Day. I'm your host, Roberto Parker. This podcast, we tackle the tough questions related to exercise, training for athletes, human performance, biochemical, biomechanical dysfunctions, problems that sometimes you have questions about that you don't quite know the answer to. So stay tuned, enjoy, take good notes, and God bless. What's up, guys? Roberto here with IST. Basic needs eating. That is the topic of today's IST health tip of the day. But before I get into basic needs eating, I need to explain something about metabolism. Metabolic flexibility. That's when your metabolism can flex and bend and mold to whatever you're eating or however you're exercising or however you're being active. Metabolic compensation, which really should be called metabolic stagnation, is not good because that's when you become locked in or stagnated to what you're doing. So if you're trying to lose weight, your body says, no, I don't want you to lose weight. If you're trying to put on good muscle or weight, the body says, no, I don't want you to. If you're trying to get over some sort of an injury or an illness or a sickness, your body says, no, I don't want you to. That's metabolic compensation. What you want is metabolic flexibility, which also means that your body can absorb and utilize nutrients such as proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals can utilize them more efficiently. Now, there's four toggles based on basic needs eating. The first one is this, and these are not necessarily any order of importance. The first one is eat more exercise less. Unfortunately, too many Americans do this pretty much year round. The only scenario I can think of where this is really good long term is if you're sick or you're coming off some sort of major illness, you need to eat more and stay off of your feet. If you have a fever or you have some sort of disease which requires you to rest and to take in good nutrients, eat more exercise less. Now, everybody goes on a vacation now and everybody has some sort of celebration after the big ball game, the graduation, the anniversaries, the vacations, the cruise, uh, they go to Cabo San Lucas or whatever the case might be. You're celebrating something, okay? You splurge a little bit. We all do it. So you're going to eat more, exercise less. Just don't spend too much time there unless you are sick. Now, the next one, I'll go over here. Eat more, exercise more. Now, what if you're an athlete trying to increase your speed, your strength, your endurance, your flexibility, your agility? Spend some time here, okay? And what if you're just trying to put on weight? You're not really a high competitive athlete. You just wanna put on some muscle because you need to. Spend more time here. Okay? Now, the next one. Exercise less, eat less. Now, if you're trying to cleanse the body like a detox, some intermittent fasting or fasting, this is where you want to go. This also has its benefits and pros and cons. Now, the last one, exercise more, eat less. Now, obviously, that's going to be for somebody who's trying to lose some weight. So, you're going to burn more calories than you put into your body. Now, with all of these, let me just say this. There's some basic foundational principles. You want your body to recover. You want your body to adapt to certain types of stresses. Exercising is a stress on the body. If you do too much of it, it's bad. If you don't do enough of it, it's bad. You've got to find the right sweet spot for your individual metabolic biochemical type. And that's going to vary from person to person based on your blood type, based on your neurotransmitter type, based on whether you're male or female, based on whether you're uh, premenopause, postmenopause ladies, based on whether you're andropause gentlemen, which means you've lost testosterone. There's a lot of factors that play into where you're going to spend most of your time here. If I've got a person 
who is 50 pounds overweight. We're going to spend a lot of time in this area here, obviously. We're going to spend some time in this area. We might even spend a little bit of time in this area. But the bulk of our time will be spent in these two areas. Certainly not up here. If you're trying to put some weight on in terms of bulk and muscle, we're going to spend more time here, a little bit of time here. Now, let me explain this real quick about this area. If you're trying to clean out the body, as we call it autophagy, clean out the cells in the body, this is what you want. And even a person who's trying to put weight on, I would have them do this for a minimal amount of time just to let the body flex so you don't get overcompensated. Because here's the problem, getting back to metabolic compensation. If you spend too much time in any one area, your body will become stagnant, will be called metabolic compensation. You don't want that. You want to be flexible. So no matter what your category is, what your goals are, you want to spend a little bit of time in each one of these. But, but, depending upon what your goals are, once again, we're going to spend more time in certain areas. I can't give you just a general area to spend most of your time here because once again, it depends on what you're wanting to accomplish and what your basic needs are in terms of eating and or exercise. If you're trying to put on weight, lift more weight. If you're trying to lose weight, we're going to change the way you lift weights. We're going to do more circuit type training, more aerobic type training. So and that's going to change even with the type of food that you're eating and how many calories you're taking in. Protein levels will pretty much remain the same. Carbohydrate levels will change. For example, if I'm going to exercise more and eat less, I want lower carbs if, if I'm trying to lose weight. If I'm trying to put on weight and or muscle, I might take in more carbs. Now, you guys follow me here? Same thing with fat. If I'm trying to lose weight, I want to increase my healthy fatty acid intake. Protein will pretty much remain the same. That is based upon your body weight. Protein is something that's not quite as flexible, but carbohydrates and fats can flex a lot more. So I hope you all understand this. The bottom line is this, each and every one of you, before we can set up a program for you where we toggle from eat more, exercise less, exercise less, eat less, exercise more, eat less, eat more, exercise more. We want to toggle between these four switches here. I need to find out what your metabolic nutritional type is. Otherwise, I'll just throw a dart at the board and see where it lands. Okay, we'll just do that. That's not a very scientific way. That's not a very good way. That's not a very healthy way. Whether you're old or young, no matter what your background is, guys, you, you have a metabolic type, which is your predisposition. And we're going to spend the bulk of our time doing that. Now, that's not to say we can't flex around a little bit because you can flex. You should flex because you don't want to stay in one area all the time because, once again, you become metabolically, metabolically stagnant or this compensation. You want metabolic flexibility. Hope you all can see that. That is what your goal is, metabolic flexibility. If you have any questions regarding any sort of training or nutritional help, give me a call. My number and information will be on the screen here in a second. Hope you all enjoyed this. My name is Roberto Parker with ISD, of course. This has been the ISD Health Tip of the Day. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.